Hi everyone, it's Laura with Share Passion again. Thank you so much for last week. I can't thank you enough for telling me what you felt about the video. I know that I was a little nervous to hear feedback from everyone, only because it's such a crazy topic. Um, but I appreciate the people that reached out and shared with me. And thank you for Facebook. Thank you for sharing it on there. I really hope that it was able to go out and encourage a lot of people. I kind of want to go over a little bit of a recap. Um, I had shared before that I'm such an extrovert and I process things so differently, but I've been given a week to really think about what I talked about last week. And I've actually watched myself on the video. I watched myself because I wanted to make sure that I was interesting and engaging and um, I'm definitely not boring, but I do recognize that if I speak to people and this is shared, how quickly you can hurt people with words or how people can misunderstand my whole stance because they don't know me or they don't really know themselves. So let's go back over what I talked about last week. I actually stated um, in same-sex marriage, I could understand how the Christian church felt persecuted by that because we feel like we understand God's scripture. We feel like you're going against this, this uh, spirit that we know is bigger than us. He has clearly stated inside the scripture that this is an issue and the Christian church is constantly persecuted because we are, we have the truth. I mean, honestly, it should affirm our faith. We don't stand out there and go, are we going to see him in our lifetime? Are we going to see our God in our lifetime? Because we're moving closer and closer and closer to the end of time based on our bad behavior. And each generation, I think it's relative. I mean, wouldn't you think it's relative? We're only going to be around for about a hundred years and the next set of people around for a hundred years. Once you start at the beginning and you get to the end, you have all of these different issues. But over the last week, I've really been digging into the media and I've been sitting with God and I've been in Genesis and I've been in Revelations and there's one thing that I think we need to, to deal with. First of all, the Christian church has been dealing with shame inside of sex since the beginning of time. So I have been debating this down to the nitty gritty itty bits of what age were Adam and Eve created and how they treated each other how they lashed out at one another, how they threw each other under the bus, how Eve goes and gets lost in the garden. She's not with her man, the only perfect man, first man created. They're in paradise and she goes off and gets lost and she's capable of finding the only fruit that she's not supposed to eat and eats it. And then Adam finds out and instead of calling God up and saying, hey God, um, the woman that you brought me, yeah, went rogue down here and just ate the fruit, um, what should I be doing? You know, because I really love her. I like her. I want her to stay. Can you come down here and kind of talk us through this? No, instead he joined right in. They both had free will. They had the opportunity to sense uh, that they were doing something wrong and they never entered into prayer or petitioning Christ for what to do next. Instead, when they were asked the direct question, instead of answering in truth, we did something we weren't supposed to do, we decided that that's what we wanted to do at the time. It sounded like a great idea. Eve didn't die. I figured I wanted to see what she was talking about, and I joined in. I know it was wrong. Um, they weren't quick to point out that they had both made a choice. They were quick to point out the other person's sin. And sin was relatively new at that point. I mean, like, you know, I don't know where God had explained that to them really in depth, what, what they were dealing with. How much information were Adam and Eve given when they were on the planet? I mean, literally, did they have a handbook that they didn't come from a womb, that they were created from the Most High God? I mean, that must have been difficult. I'm not sure how much information they had, but their behavior sounds a whole lot like a 21-year-old who's just doing their own thing. You know, Eve goes off and gets in the garden, and she decides to, I don't need a man. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, well, a 31-year-old woman knows the difference. It's really nice to have them around. A 41-year-old woman knows the difference between it's nice to have them around and I'm I'm lucky I've had my guy this long. And then a 51-year-old woman understands the time and effort that is put into that and creating a family and how it's not really worth throwing that away. It's worth working on. And in 60s and 70s and so on. And now a couple of people have debated me on this and given me an opportunity to hear another perspective. I would love to hear what people's perspective is on that. Based on the relationships that I had had, remember I told you I was also persecuted for sexual impurities, um, using my temple the wrong way, 
not being able to understand God's word and, and, and sexuality in itself at the time. I think we're all on that journey. We all need to figure it out. But the people ahead of us aren't really sharing. I've noticed that. Sex is something that I believe has been depicted to me that is not created by God. I think a lot of people act like it was created from the devil. That it's this, it's this slimy, sleazy box that most people don't understand. Oh, and the Christians get to participate in it. But I don't feel like sex has been embodied by the Christian church. That yes, it is amazing, it is awesome. I have seen that it's embarrassed most people. It's uncomfortable. It's something that, well, we, we all assume other people have, but it's really none of our business. Well, I get that a lot. I get the, well, it's really none of my business. Yeah, except when you're in your house behind closed doors and you're capable of talking about anybody you want or ask questions that you want or search people on the internet that you really don't even know, Google their name and find out everything they do in their sex life. That's crazy to me. No, I think we're more curious because we still haven't dealt with, well, we've dealt with that shame since the beginning of time. And I've really sat with this. Adam and Eve end out of paradise. They started in paradise. They end out on the other side of paradise together. Forgiveness was a huge thing for them. If they did not forgive each other, they wouldn't have made it very far. They both have clothing put on them. God clothed them. They recognize their nakedness. I find that so odd. Right now in our own culture, we have this issue called free the nipple because women's nipples have been clothed for a really long time. We have a lot of different sexual issues that are going on in our culture that are out loud in the media. Why? Well, because we got kicked out of the garden. They were closed by God. They were the only two people. Adam knew what Eve's boobs looked like. Eve knew exactly what Adam was dealing with. And yet God closed it up. Why? Well, I don't know about extreme winds or extreme heat back then, but all of a sudden they went from a temperate climate that wouldn't hurt them if they were naked to this climate that is like, well, they need clothes. They're going to deal with the land. They're going to deal with their sex. I don't think people really understood there was a whole lot of shame in the sex category the minute they got kicked out of the garden. That's really, really cool to think about the fact that the first two people were dealing with something that we're dealing with. We're not weird. We're not odd. We're human beings who have this issue that we don't know how to actually talk about. I actually feel alone on the planet most of the time because this subject does not bother me. There isn't an aspect of this subject that I haven't seen. I've been everywhere. You could know a little bit of those pieces as I share, but I thought, well, okay, that's the beginning. Those are the two straight people who get kicked out of the garden. Their sexual organs are closed up when they're outside and they have to go on really forgiving each other. They don't get a new guy. They don't get to break up and get a new guy. They're just dealing with the fact that they've received this punishment from their heavenly father and they have to go about this new section of life together. Well, we go all the way to Revelations and God has the scripture talking metaphorically about the adulterous woman and we're back to sex again, beginning and end, sex. I think sometimes uh, people don't know how to answer the question, who created sex? God, God created sex. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. You don't understand how to claim that your heavenly father gave that to you. He knew all of those issues. He's written the Psalms. He had Genesis literally take down everything about Sodom and Gomorrah and their behavior. He's not unaware of all these things. And I think over the last week, as I was really able to just kind of chew on this a little deeper, I realized, wow, we really, we really have never accepted our sexuality from the beginning of time, that it's really difficult for people to say out loud sexual things. Why do I know that? Well, because Lara at Sheer Passion, who cuts hair, asks people questions. So, how are you today? Yeah, okay, good, good. Okay, so what do you think about the whole issue in the society of uh, dealing with same-sex marriage? I mean, you got thoughts on that? Like, what are you, what are you dealing with on, on this side? Well, you know, Laura, I'm not really, I, um, 
I'm not for it, uh, but well, it's really none of my business. I love that line. Why not? It's the media thinks that it is your business. Why is it not any of your business? What are you talking about that you need to be hidden from? What are you running from? Let's go back to this. Let's ask direct questions because people deal better with direct questions. What in same sex marriage bothers you? I'm, I'm sorry, I, can you repeat the question? Well, that's called deflection. And since you know your answer is going to be a little hard for you to come by, you'll waste more time dragging it out than answering the question. What is it? What is it that bothers people about same-sex marriage? Um, well, uh, I really, I, oh, you don't want to say the sex. You are, so you, the word sex in itself, whether it's claiming heterosexual or homosexual, people have an issue saying that out loud because for that to be said, they also have to open up their own box of insecurities and that sex box, box of sex has its own box. The minute you say the word, people just run from the table. The crazies, the crazies will stick it. I'll stick it out the table. I'm not leaving. Good golly. There's nothing about this subject that's that scary. I see things as there's an awareness to where we're at. If we can actually get to the bottom of where we're at, we might have an opportunity to change our thoughts or we can claim, no, that's really what I believe and that's where I'm sticking it out because then for everyone else around, they're aware of where you're at, which is awesome. Awareness tells us where to begin and if you can't tell the truth, well, then we can't move forward as a culture. Sex in itself is a big issue. If it isn't a mom sitting in my chair talking about her son going through sexual issues, if it isn't a mom or dad sitting in my chair talking to me about their daughter and now she has a boyfriend. And I always say to them, I don't think you're talking about your daughter being told by a new person she looks good in that top or a new person to go to the movies with. I think your issue is sex. And it's always, yeah, I don't even know. Gotta put her on the pill, you know? like. Uh, and honestly, my son's a good looking kid. You know, my son's a good looking kid. I don't know what to do here. I can't stop it. No, uh, you can tell them everything about sex and be honest. It's amazing. It's awesome. It's fun. It's exciting and scary all at the same time. There's a lot of curiosity. There's things I don't understand about my own body. You know, you get to our age and it's sleep, food, or sex maybe all three at one time, who knows? Honestly, we get so busy at this point, we recognize a deep sleep is okay, you know? But when it's new, it's like, well, I think we should tell them. I think we should tell them, oh, there comes with a lot of responsibility with sexual behavior, but we don't share that with our children. Moms and dads don't know how to be a, a God-fearing man, a God-fearing woman, and to own sex in the bedroom. What does it look like to be sexy? Well, we can all plug into Dr. Ruth, who honestly, in my personality, as brazen as that woman is, I don't know if she's ever done pinched a man. I, I just don't know. But in her defense, she's willing to talk about something that most of us don't want to talk about. And I, I find that refreshing. Okay, so there's one other person out there that can say just about anything in the sex box and not be weird about it. It's happening all the time, weird things in the sex box. But because the word sex comes out, we go, <gasps> what did she say? Oh my God, you can't say those things at the table. You're a, well, you're a Christian woman. I know. I don't think a lot of people understand sex. Like it's, it's absolutely going to work every time. You can manipulate your body in just about any form you want. That doesn't mean you're making love with your husband. That doesn't mean that you are um, procreating. You could by accident. That doesn't mean that's what you set out to do. Lots of people have sex and things happen. STDs, breakups. They thought that's what the guy wanted. Is it? I mean, when we're young, we don't ask enough questions about sex. But when we're older, we sense enough about ourselves that we should ask the question, is that what you're in this for? 
because I'm a person and I'm more than that. But I tell the girls, remember, I said, what's your, what's your, uh, you know, how do you identify what your issues are? What would your necklace say? Mine was lust bunny. Okay, so if that's my issue, what does that mean? Well, I have to be very careful. It's easy for me to give into sex in itself. A lot of people um, don't struggle there. It's feeling uh, confident enough to be sexual with one person. I don't find it difficult to understand sex in itself as just pleasure. That was easy for me to delve into. Just like an alcoholic finds it easy to sit in a bar, drink alcohol, or find reasons to drink alcohol all the time. Where other people are like, what? No, I'm just on the Friday nights, weekends. You know, socially, really. Well, they don't understand that guy's issue. He took it deeper. It's not just that for him or her. And so I recognized it. And I really think that there is this identification inside of ourselves we haven't gotten to. So when we're in fights or we lack the ability to say, I am a sexual being, Laura, I am a sexual being. That does not mean that I will be delving into that every day. I won't be identifying myself there because there's much more to me than that. Yes, I do want to have sex. Yes, I do want to be desired. But there's so much more Laura than just that. And I've really been, what would you be if you had to take sex away? What, what could you do in place of sex? Worship God? Uh, local charities? Um, eat, sleep, go for a walk. I don't know. But what would happen if you had to take that away? Where else would you find pleasure or where else would you find love and desire? You have to be able to answer that. If you can't answer that, I don't think that you've dealt with what is sex? How do you see sex in your life? How do you talk to people about sex? How do you talk to your children about sex? Because I've really been thinking about where this same sex marriage issue is going to take this culture. A lot of the people that stood up and made a mockery of the bakeries and the churches who might have to marry these people, I really started reading the media and finding out how horrific the heterosexual church acted like the gentleman who calls all the gay bakeries and wants to know if they'll make him cakes that say gay marriage is wrong on them. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Because you call a bakery who identifies themselves as baking something really great instead of calling them up and saying, hey, I need the best cake ever. I'm getting married and I need vanilla with coconut icing and, you know, Oh, and by the way, I am in a relationship where I'm going to need two guys placed on top of that cake. I wanted you to know that ahead of time. I wanted to respect you. I, I just, I wasn't sure if that was okay. And let the other person answer on the other line. Like, I called you folks up because I heard you make the best cakes ever. You're supporting that, that person. You're telling them you knew something that they did well. Um, and that these bakeries could bake you a cake because that's what they're capable of. But no, you didn't call them about the cake. You put them down. You purposefully opened up that box and made them feel worthless. So you literally went right to sex. You shamed them. Scripture shaming comes in. So because where do you get gay marriages wrong? Well, you get that from scripture because God talks about that. So then people throw that on a cake because that's where it belongs. Oh, I can't wait till people are asking for phallic symbols on their cupcakes. This should be fun from a Mennonite community bakery. Fantastic, folks. Where do you think that's going to get people? inflamed. That's all that did. You might as well have torched the bakery down because that's what you were trying to do. You weren't trying to love people. You were trying to prove a point. But the only problem is that, well, why don't we call up black bakeries and, and try to get KKK cupcakes made? Because it's wrong. Bottom line, none of that behavior embodies love. None of the people were loved in that. And the media gets to put half of a truth on there. One bakery is closed down because they wouldn't bake a cake. Punishment didn't meet the crime. The state shuts their bakery down. They're forced to pay lots of money. We don't have all that story either. But it was because before same-sex marriage was passed, they asked them to make a cake. Here's my problem. I do believe that I and my husband, if we owned a bakery, loving God, and not believing that homosexual marriage is allowed by God, um 
or best in God's eyes. He talks about it. I don't want to answer for God. He puts in his word that there are issues with homosexuality, but he also puts in his word that there are issues about divorce. And my husband and I are divorced and remarried, happily remarried. There's reasons why God put terms in there about divorce and homosexuality. If you've gone through it, you'll understand. You will identify with the scripture that it's not all cakewalk at all. No pun intended on that one. But it's really just so amazing how instead of petitioning Christ uh, that we lash out at people. Had that couple called my husband and I up, uh, we need a cake for a couple lesbos real fast. Sure, not a problem. Hey, can you do me a favor? Um, I, I really have not thought deeply about how I should go about this. I haven't prayed or asked God, what do you want from me? What do you want from my little bakery? How do you want me to love these people? How do you want me to shed your light when there are different lifestyles coming in and out of my bakery? How do I share your love and also stand up for your word? How do I let these two girls who are struggling there realize that even though I don't have to believe them, I am a really great baker. I am. And I can bake her that cake she's paying and that it isn't my job to petition people's lives to be good enough for my cake baking. You're not socializing people's behavior. You're allowing them their free will and their choice. But then you go ahead and you bake that cake because... The woman can maybe put the two girls on later. If I if I just be honest with you and I haven't really thought, how does this affect my family? How does this affect my faith? Can I make you the cake, give you the figurines, and you put them on at a later date? Because I haven't done the work with my faith to really understand what my role is here. Oh no, that's not going to happen. Because then that would be humbling thyself. And you would be actually saying to that person, I hate to disappoint you, but I haven't actually dug into scripture about certain issues in our culture and how to be the best person I can be and allow God's love to shine through and not me. I apologize and I just want to let you know, thanks for hearing my side of it. I think we can both grow in this. Oh, folks, if that had gone down, we'd had some major cake making. Both the business would have profited, the Christian family could have been honest about God's word and still shown love, and the gay community could have felt supported, heard, and loved, and still allowed to be who they are, and I'm pretty sure those women could have put those figurines on the cake when it came time, because they were led to be uh, cared for, and those people chose to be honest with them instead of talk behind their back, which is pretty empowering for people. And it changes everything when we empower each other. How about the guy who decides that the heterosexual community doesn't have the same rights as the gay community because he wants gay marriage is wrong put on his cake? Well, we need a stamp. The idiot stamp for that guy. You know what? Anyone knows him, give him my number. We'll have a chat of just how nasty that was. Is everybody afraid to call him out? Don't ever put Jesus in that sentence. There isn't a cupcake that we couldn't serve with damnation on it to everybody in this town. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you don't want your cake bacon to go rogue like that all the time because you can't wait for everyone to understand shaming on a cake. You, you can't get people to see God there. You've jumped too many bridges. You forgot to see the person and try to love the person but you did try to put them down. And that is where if we call out every straight couple that isn't living up to par, what do the gay people get to write on our cakes? Happy 25th wedding anniversary. Yeah, right, liars. Ain't no happy in this anniversary. Exclamation point, smiley face. We don't want them putting that on our cakes because that would be like, well, that's hurtful. Maybe it's true. <laughs> what if it's true? Who cares if it hurts? Huh, what, you think you can't have stuff written on your cakes because you're straight? <sighs> Thanks for the last 25 years of hell at every barbecue. Wow, straight folk. I mean, because it, it could be. 
but it what it wouldn't be meant to uplift then and support it would be to tear down and it's exactly what it would do and we'd all stand up against that because that's not god that's bad people that's just straight up bad people behavior shame on us for not calling that out one of the things I, I tried to explain to Joshua was how deep I went last week on same-sex marriage. I can name five marriages right now. Butter on my tongue. I could just <laughs> those marriages out. If, you're, if you tell me the only way I can come back to this planet is to pick those five marriages, heterosexual, straight, God-fearing people, or I can be gay... What's my girlfriend's name? And am I the cute one in the relationship or is she? And if she's cuter, we're going to rule the world. I can tell you that. <laughs> I don't think anyone has ever really thought about that. Let's think about that for a second. Wait, 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 wait. What did she say? Okay. Five, God-fearing, straight couples can't stand their marriage. That's just my opinion. Just my opinion. We're not going to name them, but I got them right there you tell me the only way I can be on this planet is to be in that marriage or I'm gay I need to know my, my girlfriend's name because I don't want any parts of that because I think when it comes down to is understanding self oh that doesn't mean I have to 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 fornicate outside of God's will I'm just gonna pay bills <laughs> Look cute all the time. Let you think what you want to think. Right? Oh, 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 that's just crazy. What? Well, I don't even know what you're saying right now. Well, because I think, I, I don't think we recognize that homosexuality is a sin that can still identify Christ. I have sat for a week and thought about this. How does a straight person versus a homosexual person seek God? Because... I don't deal with homosexuality. So what does that mean? Well, it's different. I mean, I have sat and I've sat and I've sat. And I've also had some of my homosexual friends reach out to me because of my video last week. And they've explained that they do believe in God. I think on some level, I know that. But it's so hard because I'm not a homosexual person. I don't know how to feel that way. I can listen that they feel that way. I can accept they feel that way. But it's hard to really, truly understand. When I went through my divorce, I learned how God's grace can enter into my life, how I can break the laws on marriage, get a divorce, find a new husband, be happy with him, work on our relationship. We are just in bliss, not because we're without fault, but because we fit. I get it. But before I went through the divorce, I didn't know how to connect with people there and have compassion there. It's hard to truly understand how a gay male or a, um, a, a lesbian can search for God because you're sensing her sexuality keeps her from him, but then ours would. And I think in all things, sex in itself is an issue in our culture. It has been an issue since the day we got kicked out of the garden. So I wanted to encourage us this week to really think deeply about ourselves and the subject that empowers me, which is sex, to understand it, to not be embarrassed by it, but to really own where you're at, whether it's on the scale of you don't know much, you don't do much, you haven't been much curious, that's okay. I think that's great. You start there. I'm way down that road, girlfriend. I've, I've seen everything. Seen it all, heard it all, talked about it all. It doesn't embarrass me. It, it just lets me know, okay, this is where we're at. This is where we start if you want to start. But I think if we want to start being honest, when we're nasty, we're just straight up nasty. Somebody needs to get the nasty card and throw it on the on the field. Nasty, stop calling bakeries and ask them to put nasty things on your cake and claim Jesus. None of that crap. Shame on y'all. Where is the fire from heaven some days? Right? right? When people are like completely out of line. Where's the fire, Lord? We need fire over here to the left. We got a rogue person. Take them out. No one needs people to tear them down to, to see God. Once again, I could call those people up and talk to them about you tore people down because you don't walk with God. Because when you get back to self-love, 
you wouldn't do those things. That's our goal this week, guys. Where are we at? Where are we on the subjects? Where are we on the topics? And then try to ask questions about, is anyone else feeling that? And really get to the bottom of it. All right, time's up. It flies by. It's so good to talk to you. If you are following me on um, YouTube, please subscribe. If you don't think I said something that's of value, please leave a comment. Let me think on that. Let me change my perspective. Good to see you. Bye.